one of the questions I get most commonly and most frequently from entrepreneurs or inventors or company builders is how do I scale a company but yet preserve the culture that is so, uh, it's so instrumental in getting us to the place that we're at? And that's a fantastic question. And uh, growing up in a small farming community in Nebraska, one of the gifts I got was simplification. Uh, when things broke, there weren't a whole lot of parts around to fix them. And so uh, farmers get really, really great at very simple approaches to solving problems. So I'm gonna share with you a simple hack today uh, that has been instrumental for, uh, for me and teams I've been a part of to grow and scale companies at a highly rapid rate, but yet preserve culture. And it involves two ingredients. One is the people at the front lines of a business. And the second is leaders tapping their creativity and getting out of their way and letting magic happen. Sam Walton's book, Made in America, had a big impact on me. Uh, and one of the things that Sam uh, tells in, the, in that book or tells stories is visiting his stores uh, and more precisely visiting the people in his stores. And what he discovered was a little bit of a secret. And that is, if you want to know what's wrong in a business, go to the front lines. The people at the front lines are getting an earful every day about what's wrong with the product or the service, but they also often have incredibly innovative ideas on improving your business. And so Sam inspired a 20% rule uh, in me that I sort of uh, adopted, and that is, I try to spend one day a week, 20% of the week, one day out of five, at the front lines with the people that are actually interfacing with the market uh, and the customers. And that taught me how much potential exists in a place in a company where few executives actually spend time. It's a little bit of a secret hack. So how do you unleash the power of the front lines, especially when you're scaling? That was a constant challenge for me as a president of Tesla. We were quite literally doubling a multi-billion dollar revenue company every year. And that was before we had introduced our mass market product. Late on the Sunday night uh, of launch week for the Model 3, we were going to launch on a Thursday night in LA. Late on a Sunday night, I got a call. Uh, and I uh, picked up the phone, and it was Elon. And Elon uh, said, hey, what do you think of taking the first reservations for the Model 3 in stores this week? Uh, and then we'll open up for reservations online after the event. I thought about it for a second. I said, Elon, that's a great idea. We're going to get a ton of traffic in our stores this week, and we're going to get a ton of press. But give me an hour to make sure that we're not going to overwhelm the security at the malls that we're in. He said, sure thing. I'll give you an hour. Call me back. So about 15 minutes go by. My phone buzzes again. Uh, it turned out he couldn't help himself. He'd already tweeted it out. <laughs> and it turned out to be a great tweet. The press took off, uh, and the momentum grew all week. And by Thursday morning, there were literally thousands of people in line at different locations around the world. Um, and we got about 100 million media impressions for free. The advertising budget for the largest consumer product launch now of all time was zero. But then reality set in. How are we going to do this? How are we actually going to get this done? We, were ha we had to get ready to literally 5x a company that was already a $4 billion company in about 18 months. And we started to ask ourselves, how are we going to do this? There aren't playbooks for scaling a company this large this fast. And how are we going to scale and not let the wheels come off the cart? I've got to admit, I was scared. Uh, I was scared we were going to stumble. And I felt that that stumble was likely going to happen uh, at a crucial point in the place in the business, and that is how we interf interfaced and interacted with our customers. We'd become famous for wowing people, surprising people, and preserving that culture kept me and my leadership team up at night. We had a goal with this launch, uh, and that was to preserve the culture that we had built of mission and creativity and team. But the trick was we had to train and hire thousands of people to come online to help with the influx of customers that we were going to see. And we didn't have time to do in-depth training in order to meet that demand. Plus, several of us had found over our career that overly complex or overly prescriptive training often drains the soul out of a company and its mission. And so because Elon insisted in the organization on first principles, 
we gathered our leadership team and started to think about how could we boil down the approach that we wanted in terms of encapsulating the interaction that we wanted to have with customers down to one simple principle that could be taught across 12,000 people globally and we gave ourselves this charge in less than a minute. It had to be super simple. It's so simple, in fact, I'm a little embarrassed to share it with you in retrospect, because it's gonna seem obvious. But believe me, it wasn't obvious at the time. When we sat down with this challenge and said, how are we gonna tra train 12,000 people to surprise their customer and delight the customer with great service? How are we gonna do that uh, in less than a minute? It took a lot of hard effort to get there. It's very simple, and here's the one simple principle that we designed as our hack for training our worldwide service and sales organization. And that was, simply this, make them talk about you at dinner tonight. Think about that for a second. Make them talk about you at dinner tonight. It requires you doing something surprisingly awesome for another person. Think about doing that for your spouse, your partner, a child, a neighbor. It happens far too infrequently in our society today. But we set out to do that. We wanted that simple principle to unleash the creativity in our front lines in a way that in-depth training for weeks could not do. And Sam Walton had preached this, it, that magic happens at the front lines when customers experience your product and your people. And our people started to do surprisingly awesome things for consumers. And they got incredibly creative. And the stories came, started to come back at us almost immediately. One of the first was, uh, was from Florida. An owner jumped in his Model X to take his wife to the hospital. The Model X doesn't start. So they jump in their second car. And on the way, he calls uh, our local service operation. And the service manager picks up the phone, takes the call, and detects something really wrong in the, in the, in the caller's voice. So he decides to go personally to their house to take care of the car. When he gets there, he discovers that the kids are home alone. This is early in the morning, about 7.30. He takes the kids to school, goes grocery shopping, <laughs> drops off the groceries, picks the kids up from school at the end of the day, sends a Model X to the hospital so the father can get home uh, and see the kids, and he does this all without the customer asking. The customer was raving about this. He was raving to anybody who would listen. He called me, he posted it online, he called local media, he emailed friends, and uh, he was just blown away that somebody would do that. So I tracked down our manager and I said, how did you, how did you know what to do in this situation? And wh how, what possessed you to come up with all those extra steps way beyond the call of duty? And he said, hey, when I saw the situation, I knew exactly what, would be, what I needed to do to get them to talk about me at dinner that night and probably every ha family holiday for years. About a year later, Hurricane Irma was, uh, was bearing down on Florida. And there, was a hu there were huge evacuations underway. And owners of Tesla's shortest range car uh, were worried that they wouldn't have enough juice to get out of harm's way. Within a few hours of hearing this, our service leadership team, led by Karim Busta, uh, made a decision to send an over-the-air update to unlock extra battery capacity for those, those, those cars and allow people to have enough juice to get out of harm's way. Customers, social media, and traditional media picked up on this, and they were astonished that a large company would or could do something like that. And the stock actually went up 3% the next day, largely because of Karim's decision. When I asked Karim how he'd managed to move so quickly, he said it was easy. We ask our people to do this all the time, and I wanted my chance to get them to talk about me at dinner tonight. <laughs> and, uh, and that challenge of scaling and applying a principle actually proved to unlock dozens of stories that I'd love to tell you about. But drawing it back to the entrepreneurs that, uh, that ask these questions, I often tell them that scaling, can, uh, scaling rapidly can be uh, overwhelming and seemingly complex. And it is complex and difficult, especially if you force all the decisions to ma be made centrally or follow a strict playbook. Because in that model, you as the leader have to get everything right. But there's an alternative. And the alternative is focusing on your frontline teams, tapping their passion and creativity, and you'll find that's powerful. And then carefully creating simple frameworks 
in this framework, make them talk about you at dinner tonight, was within the, the guardrails of our values. Always be truthful, do no harm, save the planet. We knew that we could tap creativity in a really safe and powerful way, um, and it was, it was the secret to unlocking revolutionary service in our business. So if you want your organization, large or small, to scale and yet still preserve the, the creativity in the organization, the culture that's kind of gotten you there, as a leader, tap into your front lines. Unleash their creativity and keep it simple. Make them talk about you at dinner tonight. Thank you. <laughs>